السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today inshallah we will have a look upon two of the uh, very important very knowledgeable uh, female companions who lived around the uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our first character is Asma bintu Abi Bakr radiyallahu anha. And uh, Asma had a famous nickname which was Zatu Nitaqain. So when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to migrate to Medina, the preparations were done in the house of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So Abu Bakr said to, uh, to his daughter, give me two belts just to wrap uh, the stuff of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, I have nothing except my uh, cloth belt. And he said, give it to me. So he cut it into two and he put uh, each of the stuff in uh, one uh, side and then she wrapped it around her and that's why she was called Zatun Nitaqayim. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has replaced this uh, cloth belt of yours with two in paradise. So who is this character? Who is this female companion? Who is this amazing uh, uh, female companion who lived at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Asma was known for her being so patient, so truthful, so uh, a, a true worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who always remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she, radiallahu uh, anha, she was the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. So she was the daughter of the first Muslim person in Islam, male uh, figure in Islam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Her mom was Qutayla bint Abdil Uzza, and uh, she was uh, the mother of Abdullah ibn Zubair, the amazing, the uh, great companion. She was the sister of uh, the mother of believers, Aisha radiallahu anha. And she had a very high status and she had self-honor. She was a poet. She was very eloquent. Her words touch the hearts. She is Asma bintu Abi Bakr radiallahu anha. Asma radiallahu anha uh, became a Muslim after 17 people who, uh, who became Muslim before her. And she pledged to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She believed in him. She believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She, she had a strong faith. She was, she, she had uh, of her, of her great um, uh, belief that her mom 
was not a Muslim. So Qutayla uh, was divorced. Okay, so uh, as siddiq radiallahu an, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, divorced her mom during the pre-Islamic era. So, fil jahiliya. But Qutayla, after, uh, after uh, some time, she, she wanted to visit her daughter. And she did. So she came to her and uh, she had gifts and she, uh, she had some food, some ghee. But uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, she was not Muslim at that time. And um, she had uh, with her, her son, Al-Harith, Al-Harith ibn al-Mudrak. And uh, it was something for uh, Asma that she did not know what to do. So she did not accept the gift. She did not let her in the house until she sent to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she asked him. She, she sent someone with the, to telling him that my mom came to visit me. She's not a Muslim. What should I do? She's, she, she brought some gifts with, with her and she wanted to be in my house. What should I do? And of course, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, uh, the family ties is important for him. So he, when, when he got this question, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed uh, the, the following ayah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقصطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصتين. So this answer to her question was revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Allah said لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you. So you, it's okay. Those who do not fight you because of religion, you are on different religion than them, but they do not fight you for that. And uh, they do not expel you from your homes. So Allah does not forbid you so he does not forbid you uh, for, uh, to to uh, to be righteous towards them and to act justly to act justly toward them indeed allah loves those who act act justly and you get this question actually so many times so we have we 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 don't live in a Muslim country. How should we treat people, those non-Muslims? So this is the answer. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not forbid you from being good to those who are good to you, because Allah loves to for, for people to act justly. So when Asma got the the answer, she got her into her house and she accepted her gift. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to her, Naam Sili Ummaki. Yes, be in contact with your mom. Be good to your mom. And of course, we have so many cases like this in, 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 a, in our days now. So you see that the uh, son or the daughter is Muslim, but the parents are not. Should they, should they not be good to them? No. Kids should be righteous to their, to their parents. They should treat them well. And the reason, the hidden reason in that, when they see that the religion, this new religion that their son or daughter have, uh, embraced so they uh, uh, they are now 
their relationship to the parents is now way better than what they were before being Muslims. You know, يعني, uh, there are so many uh, adults, kids, يعني, who, who are not good to their parents. But Muslims, Muslims, they have to show respect for their parents. They have to, to help their parents. They have to uh, take care of their parents, and especially when they get old. In, in Muslim countries, uh, you rarely find or you rarely hear people putting their parents in nursing homes when they get older. But if you go to, to non-Muslim countries and you see the, the all, all nursing homes are full, the kids are not fulfilling the duties they have towards their parents. Islam is so careful about this issue. The parents raised the child when when he was so when he was a baby, when he was young, and now. When he gets older, he would throw the parents in a nursing home. It's really you find this in real Muslim countries. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered Asma to be good to the mom. Now Asma radiallahu anha, she witnessed all incidents before migration before revelation before revelation and after and she lived the incidents day by day so you know she was the daughter of as-siddiq sayyidina abu bakr radiyallahu an yeah the, the 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 closest companion to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the the person who was always with Sayyid Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the person who had the honor of being the first of the men to become a Muslim and to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the first one to call for Islam after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with the permission of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yani, who did he get? He he tried to convince people to become Muslim. And he, at the beginning, we know that the call for Islam was in secret. So he chose some of the companions who became Muslims. And who did he get? He got Uthman ibn Affan. He, he convinced him that uh, to, to, to be a Muslim. So he had a great um, uh, uh, way of convincing people to become Muslims. So he got Uthman ibn Affan, Zubair ibn al Awwam, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Talhat ibn Zubair. So who are these people? These are most, most of the 10 People whom Allah, whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given the glad tidings that these are the people of Jannah. He's a great person and he brought great people. And of course, the, uh, his uh, household, so the first one to believe, it was his uh, wife, Umm Ruman, and we talked about Umm Ruman in a previous session. And also his daughters. So they all become Muslims after he called them for Islam. So Asma radiallahu anha, his daughter, had a very important role in supporting her father, in being good to her father, in uh, uh, getting to hold big, responsibilities for the uh for 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 the call of islam and for to give victory to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also had great confidence in abu bakr and 
in his two daughters, Asma and Aisha. And of course, Aisha became his, uh, the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, later on. So he had a great confidence in them. And that's why he told them about the secret of Hijrah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, the permission to, to migrate, only those three people knew about it. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, his daughter Asma, and his uh, other daughter Aisha, because the, the, the two daughters were at home when yeah, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, came to tell Sayyidina Abu Bakr about the migration to Medina. So now let's hear from Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, what she said about that. And I will be uh, uh, narrating the hadith, both in Arabic and English. So an Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, uh, لقل يوم كان يأتي على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا يأتي فيه بيت أبي بكر أحد طرفي النهار. So rarely did the Prophet fail to visit Abu Bakr's house every day, either in the morning or in the evening. Okay, so every day Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم would visit Sayyidina. أبو بكر فلما أذن له في الخروج إلى المدينة لم يرعنا إلا وقد أتانا ظهرا so لم يرعنا إلا وقد أتانا ظهرا how what happened so they wear they wear uh, uh, they were thinking what's going on when the permission for the migration to Medina was granted to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, all of a sudden the Prophet came to us at noon. So he did not ever visit them at noon, but at that day he did. So فخبر به أبو بكر رضي الله عنه فقال ما جاءنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذه الساعة إلا لأمر حدث. So Abu Bakr was informed uh, about the, the sudden visit of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his house and he immediately said certainly the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم come, has come to us for an urgent matter. So what was it? فلما دخل عليه قال لأبي بكر أخرج من عندك. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to Abu Bakr, uh, uh, let nobody stay in your home. So get everyone out of your home, of the, of the, of the house. But what was the answer? So Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, قال يا رسول الله إنما هما ابنتايا يعني عائشة وأسماء. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, the, the, the only two people at, at home are my two daughters, Aisha and Asma. So, قال أشعرت أنه قد أذن لي في الخروج. So, سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I feel that I have been granted the permission for migration. So immediately, what did Sayyidina Abu Bakr say? قَالَ أَصُّحْبَةَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَصُّحْبَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So Abu Bakr said, I will accompany you, O Messenger of Allah. I want to accompany you. So uh, uh, he said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ عِنْدِي نَاقَتَيْنِ أَعْدَدْتُهُمَا لِلْخُرُوجِ فَخُذْ إِحْدَاهُمَا so Abu Bakr said, uh, 
Uh, and of course, before this, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nodded his head that, yes, you were granted the permission to, to accompany me in, in, in my migration. Uh, so Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, uh, um, I have two she camels. I have prepared specially for migration. So he felt that one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the permission to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to migrate. So he prepared himself and he prepared two she camels so that they both will use while traveling. Uh, um, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? When, when Sayyidina Abu Bakr offered the she camel, he said, I have accepted it on the condition. So I have one condition. What was the condition? That I will pay its price. So even if he was his best friend, he wanted to pay for the price. Subhanallah. So this is what Aisha radiallahu anha narrated how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to visit them at a time that it was not normal for him to visit. So now Sayyida Aisha when she, she said uh, noting that uh, after, after Abu Bakr her father was granted the permission to to by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to travel with him. She said, "Wallahi, ma sha'artu qat qabl ذلك اليوم أن أحدا يبكي من الفرح حتى رأيت أبا بكر يبكي يوم I never, ever witnessed. I never ever saw anyone before that day crying because of happiness, because of joy, uh, except for my father, Abu Bakr. He was crying of happiness, of joy, that he is going to accompany say, the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it was the Hijrah. Uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated with uh, uh, a Siddiq radiallahu an, with Abu Bakr radiallahu an, until they they came, uh, so they, they left and uh, until they came to a cave in uh, Jabal Thawr and they got into there. So Asma radiallahu anha and her brother Abdullah, they had a very important mission uh, at that time to get the information and the food each night. So what happened? Uh, every night they would go to uh, the cave uh, Abdullah radiallahu an, uh, used to give Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the news of Quraysh and what they were doing, what they were planning, how they are doing after he migrated and left and left Mecca. Uh, while Asma, his sister, was providing Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and her father with food and drink. And it is narrated that Abdullah uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 would get uh, some sheep, it just so uh, he will make them graze uh, at that area or the area where Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would, would go uh, just to uh, mix the traces of 
the footsteps or the, the she camels that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was using with Sayyidina Abu Bakr So Asma anha narrates, she says, when uh, the Prophet وسلم, started his hijrah, a group of Quraysh people, the nobles of Quraysh, and they came and they knocked on the door. Among them was Abu Jahl. So they knocked on the door and she opened the door and uh, she, uh, when, when she opened the door, they asked her, where's your father, O oh, daughter of Abu Bakr? And Asma said, I don't know where my father is. So Abu Jahl uh, hit her hardly. Well, he slapped her and he was, he was a very bad person. He was, uh, so he um, hit her, he slapped her and she says that her earring fell, fell down. She said, then they left. And three nights after Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and my father left and we did not know uh, uh, and nobody knew anything about them until they uh, they got the information that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and her father Abu Bakr, Amir ibn Fahira, also the uh, uh, slave of uh, Abu Bakr, wa Abdullah ibn Ariqit, Abdullah was their guide. So they knew, uh, they got the information and they knew that. So <clears throat> when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left with Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr took all his money. They say it was about 5,000 or 6,000 of their, of their money. So his father came, came, and his father was Abu Kuhafa. He wasn't a Muslim at that time yet. So he came, and uh, uh, I think at that time he was, he was not, uh, he was blind, I think. So when uh, when he came, he came to uh, to to see them. He came to to Abu Bakr's house, to his son's house, and he uh, he said, "This this son of mine has taken all all his money." So he left, and he took the money too. So Asma said. No, Grandpa, he left so much for us. And she went to uh, 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 some uh, to a pile of uh, stones and she uh, uh, that that uh, that pile was in a, uh, in a corner of a house. And Abu Bakr used to put his money there at that corner. And she covered the stones that were the pebbles that there were with um, uh, with uh, something. And she said, uh, "Look, look, give me your hand." And she made she put she put her her, her grandpa's hand on the uh, um, on the stones that he thought that this was money. So. This, I think, yeah, he was, he was blind, yes. So she said, oh, Grandpa, he left all of this for us. So he said, okay, so if he has left all of this for you, then he has left you uh, a lot. So, subhanAllah, Asma was clever. She was smart. She was courageous. Uh, she faced uh, Quraysh. She she faced their torture. She faced their uh, mocking and being ironic uh, against her. So she was very smart how to deal with this situation. And uh, 
uh, she was wise, uh, as we just mentioned, that she convinced her, her grandpa that her father left them a lot of money. So she was uh, uh, a great female companion. So Asma'u got married to Zubair ibn al-Awwam in Mecca. And she lived very poor life with him. So she said, she narrates that, Zubair got married to me and um, he had nothing, nothing except his, his horse. So I used to take care of his horse. I used to, uh, to uh, get to the water, to bring water. I used to um, prepare the dough. Uh, actually, uh, she mentions that she was not a good uh, baker. So her, her uh, uh, neighbors of the Ansar used to bake for her and they used to take care of her. So she said, I used to take the seeds, uh, to, to move the seeds from one place to another place. And one day while I was putting all the seeds on my head in a container on my head, and uh, she says the, the, the distance was almost about a mile and a half or two miles. She said, uh, one day I met uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was with some of his companions. So he, he told me, come, uh, le, uh, let me, uh, come right behind me and let me take you to, to, uh, to your home. Having seen how heavy the load that she had on her head, but she remembered that her husband was... Uh, very uh, jealous person. And uh, she said, uh, she, she apologized nicely to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew exactly why. So um, uh, when she came to her husband, she told him that, and he said to her, Wallahi lahamluk innawa kana ashadda alayya min rukubiki maha. Yani, I feel so bad that you are uh, carrying this, this stuff, this heavy load on your head. So that is way more uh, 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 heavy on me than if you have uh, uh, accepted the offer from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she said, I was... Uh, I kept doing this until my father sent me uh, someone to help me. And, uh, and that was as if he has freed me from, uh, from uh, some uh, uh, slavery work. So uh, Asma radiallahu anha was not happy with her, with her husband. He was he was tough, very tough. And one day she she told her father, and she she complained to her father, and he said to her, "Be patient, you will be highly rewarded." So look at the advice that she got from her from her father. He did not say, "Oh, I will I will talk to him. I will make it." hard for him um uh, you are uh, uh my daughter i will i will make him pay for that no he calmed his daughter he calmed her he he reminded her that if she is patient she will be highly rewarded in heaven and she did but one day uh, her son became uh, uh, Abdullah. Abdullah was a, 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 a courageous young man. He was always uh, defending those who are oppressed. He was seeing how, how his father is treating his mom. 
And one day there was there was a, a problem, a big issue between uh, Asma and her husband. So he hit her. So Asma called her son. And when his father saw that he, he is coming to uh, defend her, he said, your mom is, uh, will be divorced if you come in. So he did, he came in and he, he got his mom divorced from, from the dad. And uh, she lived very happy life with her son until he died and he was killed by um, uh, what is uh, Al Hajjaj. And it's a long story actually, but the the uh, I, the the point is the uh, uh, Abdullah was uh, telling his mom before he, he before they uh, captured him he said inni akhafu in qatalani ahlu shami an yumathilu bi wa yaslibuni so he said oh mom i'm scared that if they cat capture me they will uh, they will mutilate me so his mom answered oh boy she wanted to strengthen him. She, she said, oh boy, would the sheep feel any uh, pain when they uh, cut, cut it after being slaughtered? So don't worry. Go and seek Allah's uh, help. So subhanAllah, uh, she had a very uh, strong position with Al Hajjaj when he said to her uh, after after they killed her son and they uh, uh, put him, they crossed him, and uh, he said, "I was asked to take care of you." She said, "I don't want you." And I heard uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Yahruju min thaqifin kazzabun wa midhir." So there, there will be uh, a liar and a destroyer. So you will, you are that person. So the liar we knew that was, uh, 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 this is what she said. And it was just a few days after her daughter, uh, after her son uh, uh, died that she passed away. This is just a little bit about this great female companion, the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, who was nicknamed by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zatul Nitaqayn. If we move to uh, another female companion, and we will do it very briefly, her name is Ar-Rabi'u bintu Mu'awadh. And she was one of the people who got the glad tidings of being uh, 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 given, given the good news that she is one of the people of Al-Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 18, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنْزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا So certainly was Allah pleased with the believers when they pledged alliance to you, O Muhammad. And that happened under the tree. And he knew what was in their hearts. So he sent down tranquility upon them and rewarded them with an imminent conquest. She was a great female companion. She was a true believer. 
she was she blessed uh, blessed to say the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam under the tree that she is ready to sacrifice herself for the sake of Allah. Her father is Muawwad ibn al Harith, and he, her mom is uh, Umm Yazid bin Tuqais. So uh, Al Rabia was uh, one of the <clears throat> pioneers who became Muslims, who accepted the uh, new religion. She was very strong in faith and she was very wise. So when uh, it was the time of uh, Al Hudaybiyah, and that was uh, on uh, year six to Hijra. So what happened at that, at that year, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went out to Mecca. He was, he wanted to perform uh, Umrah. So he was with Ihram and he didn't want any, uh, any war. He, uh, he didn't want Quraysh to, to fight him or to prevent him from visiting the Kaaba. So uh, he went with some of the uh, companions and al Rabia was one of them. When he got into Al-Hudaybiyah, so he called Sayyidina, Muhammad, uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab anh, to, to send him to Mecca. So just to tell them that uh we 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 are here not to fight you but just to uh perform our umrah but sayyidna umar ibn al-khattab said ya rasulullah you know how hard i was on Quraysh and i'm uh, they will not uh, yani they will not spare me if they see me with them but uthman ibn affan is a better person to send. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted the idea and he sent Uthman, Uthman radiallahu an. So Uthman went and um, he saw, uh, he met Aban ibn Sa'id ibn al-As. And when he got into Mecca, Aban uh, 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 protected him. So, and uh, until until he was able to give the message of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the people of Mecca. Yeah. But Uthman uh, did not go back. He was, he was late in going back. And it was, uh, there were rumors that Uthman, Uthman was killed. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, he said they killed uh, our uh, uh, delegate, so we have we have to to show. Uh, uh, I, ha I have to see how uh, uh, strong you are in faith. So it was Bayatul Ridwan, and that was under the tree. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايَعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنْزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا وَمَغَانِمَ كَثِيرَةً يَأْخُذُونَهَا وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those uh, uh, true uh, believers who pledged with, uh, to you under the tree. So he, Allah knows exactly what's in their heart, in their heart. And he uh, descended, he uh, descended tranquility upon them and he gave them great victory. And Rabiya bin Tumu'awaz was one of those companions who performed that pledge. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever, uh, uh, pledged on that day, got the good, uh, the glad tidings that إنه لا يدخل النار إن شاء الله من أصحاب الشجرة أحد من الذين بايعوا تحتها. No one of those who uh, gave the pledge under the tree will, uh, no one of this group will be, uh, uh, will get into. Uh, 
uh, fire. So they are they were all saved. And Rabia bint al Muawaz was one of those who got the glad tidings of being of the people of Jannah. Uh, Rabia was very active in the calling for Islam and in building a strong uh, uh, society. Uh, she narrated hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the uh, tabi'een also narrated uh, from her. When she was once asked, Sifi lana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so describe Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for us, she said, if you see him, you would see the, the sun glowing. And one narration for Rabia, which is very important, was that when she was asked about the, uh, how, how did Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam perform uh, wudu, perform ablution, she said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول اسكبي لي وضوءا so just pour me some water I want to perform wudu and she said so pour a blush of water for me and she said she she described how the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم performed it and she said يغسل كفيه ثلاثا ووضع وجهه ثلاثا ومضمض واستنشق مرة ووضع يديه ثلاثا ثلاثا ومسح برأسه يبدأ بمؤخر رأسه ثم بمقدمه وبأذنيه كلتيهما وبطونهما ووضع رجليه ثلاثا. So she said uh, the prophet uh, صلى الله عليه وسلم washed his hands. up to the wrist three times and washed his face three times and rinsed his mouth and uh, let me see. So he rinsed his mouth and snuffed uh, up water once and uh, then he washed his forearms three times and why 